Today we're going to remove the EGR cooler and valve from the engine. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm your host Frank Maurice and you're watching Ratchet and Frank TV. The first thing to do is remove the EGR valve from the manifold. But before we remove it from the manifold, we have to remove the lines that supply and return the oil to the valve. The first one is the supply. This line comes directly from the oil filter housing and it's known for being one of the more difficult lines to remove while the engine is in the chassis. The line at the top of the EGR valve will return the oil back to the engine block at a galley in the rear. This line is also pretty difficult to remove if you're removing it while in chassis, and a lot of guys, including myself, will result to using a shaved down three quarter wrench in an effort to gain a little bit of extra space due to the extremely limited access. We're gonna pop the horseshoe pipe out too. This is just a quick two V-band clamps and you could pull it right out. This right here tends to be a make or break moment for a lot of people. Removing these bolts from the manifold can get sticky and if they break off on you, you'll probably end up replacing the manifold. In order to avoid that though, use your ratchet and loosen them all by hand first, then you could use your gun to remove them quickly. You'll notice I do that a lot. I rarely use impact guns right off the bat. I like to break everything loose by hand first and then I'll follow up with an impact gun. And the only reason I do this is to avoid breaking stuff because any good mechanic knows every 20 minute job is one broken bolt away from becoming a three day fiasco. These hose clamps hold the rubber coupler in between the EGR outlet pipe and the EGR cooler. You can see the hose pretty much fall apart as soon as I put my screwdriver to it. This isn't usually the case, they usually pop right off, but this was probably sitting out in the sun for some time and became brittle because of that. When you're taking stuff apart like this, every once in a while you have to make a decision that looks exactly like this. You have to say, okay, I'm no longer trying to reuse this part, instead I just need to get it off and I'm going to use a couple different means, each one more destructive than the last, but it's only about getting the part off now, it's no longer about reusing it. And that's exactly what you see right here, it's just about getting that coupler off that outlet pipe so we could keep moving forward. The next thing we're going to do is remove the EGR cooler mounting straps. These are super tight and it's easy to strip them out. In order to avoid doing that, I'll use a 13 millimeter wrench with a long piece of pipe and slip it over the wrench so that I effectively extended the wrench and this will give me a lot of extra leverage. It helps out all the time. The gap between the two bands on the mounting strap is too tight for me to fit my normal socket in between, but I could take a screwdriver and widen that gap up a little bit just by bending the straps out, and then I could fit my socket in there, no big deal. In order to prevent the wrench from stripping out, I'll apply a light bit of pressure with my forward index and middle finger while I run the pipe with my other hand. Never chance stuff like this and always have patience because one time is all you get and if you mess that time up, you're gonna have another problem in front of the one before the one you have to fix. And that is just not fun. And I know for a fact there's a couple of you out there saying, oh my God, you ruined your straps when you bent them out like that. Let me show you why that is not the case. Simply grab your ball peen hammer, go ahead and tap those bands back into place and there you have it, straps that are just as good as the remanufactured ones. Sometimes you get lucky and these R clips and clevis pins will pop right out. Other times, like you're gonna see in a second, they get really stuck up in there and you have to gently work them out to avoid breaking anything. Usually, you'll be able to tell right away whether or not something's going to give you an issue on whether or not it wants to come out. But again, any good mechanic will tell you it will come out. It's just a matter of how far down the list of destructive methods we're gonna get through before it comes out. Right now, I'd like to think that we're at a solid one on the destructometer. Nothing major, a little bit of penetrating oil and some aggressive shaking, as well as some light tapping. Up a notch, you'll start to see things like a large chisel and hammer being used with swings that are controlled in both power and precision. In order to avoid making a mess in my shop floor, I'll drain what I can through the pet cock on the bottom of the cooler while it's still on the engine.
I'll have to actually remove that petcock in order to make clearance over the heat shield to remove it from the engine. Always be careful because even if you drained it from the petcock, the cooler still will have coolant inside of it, so just drain it right over a bucket. Now depending on how lucky you are, your cooler may have something else waiting inside of it for you, just like mine does. Now we're actually going to pull this thing apart and see exactly what this stuff is as well as what would cause this in another video, but for now, thank you guys for watching, I will see you next time on Ratchet & Frank TV.